Uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm Steve Kennedy, the current incident controller here at, uh, at Worsley's today. I'm going to give you an overview of where we are with the operation today. Um, today we're continuing with um, our hotspot work up on the hill. Uh, we've got all our crews uh, back up there working and we've got machinery operating up there as well. Uh, the conditions have changed a wee bit today. Uh, it's a wee bit cooler for us, but we have got that wind behind uh, blowing things around a bit for us. We, we are still managing to fly our helicopters up there at, at this stage. Our drone team worked again overnight. Uh, they identified about another 17 hotspots in the areas that they flew. Um, we're down to, uh, with those 17, we're, we've got 40 hotspots that we're aware of at the moment from the areas that we've identified that may be um, at risk for us. So they're working actively on, on all of those today. So fortunately, with the, being a bit cooler, it's uh, probably a bit easier on our crews up there. So it's not so hot, uh, but we are really aware of the fatigue factor with our crews, uh, making sure that they're, they're getting plenty of rest and hydration up there as, as well. So this operation will continue. At the moment, we're planning through till uh, Thursday at this stage, uh, but we're hoping as time goes on and once we p get past the, the weather conditions today um, and how we get on with the hotspot work that we may be able to start reducing our, what we've got working up on the hill. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Brent Smith from the City Council. I'm one of the controllers. Um, just uh, here to uh, to uh, just remind people that we're still under a state of emergency and we will do so until uh, we get to the point where it doesn't uh, require the multi-agency effort. Um, we really want to thank the public for the patience and the respect they've given the firefighters here. It's made it a lot easier to get their job done and it is, having a look at the fire ground, it is a really difficult piece of terrain to work on. Um, also for those uh, keen recreational Enthusiasts, uh, just a reminder also that we uh, still have the walking tracks and cycling tracks west of Rapaki closed. Um, and if we could, uh, just until further notice, keep an eye on the council website. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Roy Apley. I'm the Senior Sergeant of Police, Forward Commander for the Fire Ground today. Uh, we've got the privilege of doing reassurance patrols for members of the public living in the vicinity. Uh, so far that's been going really well and our other main job is here just to assist civil defence and fire service with any requests that they might have. Thank you. Just on the weather conditions, at what point will the aircraft stop going? Is there a, a threshold or a limit that you have? Well, each machine that they're flying is a wee bit different and the pilots on those machines will make the decision for their particular machine when they get to that threshold. And what are the numbers at the moment for ground crews and aerial crews? Uh, we've got around about 120 uh, people on the incident ground. Uh, the vast majority of them are firefighters up on up on the ground, which would be 100 plus. And we've got the support staff down here. We've still got four aircraft available for us down here as well. How close did the fire get to the houses in Governor's Bay? Oh, nowhere near them. Uh, it just uh, it jumped the road. Uh, but it was contained pretty quickly over that side. Have the volunteers uh, assisting with the fire gone back to work? Uh, some of them. Uh, actually, I was just talking to one before. He's just left work to come here this afternoon. So they're trying to, it's difficult for them. They're trying to balance their work commitments uh, which with helping the community, which they, they all love doing. Uh, but there's a balance and a, a limit to how much we can expect from that as well. And what difference has the Army's assistant made to keeping the fire contained? Um, oh look, it's made, probably made a big difference to the energy levels of the people. They come along here, um, they get their breakfast, so the Army put on a really good breakfast for them this morning. They've got a packed lunch, and when they come down off the hill after a hard day's toil, uh, they'll have dinner ready for them as well before they go home. So they'll feed the crew that are going home, and also they'll feed the crew that are going up for tonight before they start. And is the fire contained? It is contained. Uh, so it's contained, but it's not completely out. And can we expect there to be residents being able to go back to their homes and the to be closed within the week? 
Um, all the residents who are in their homes, I, I understand, apart from one. And when are they likely to be allowed to go back? Um, it, it won't be today, and that's mainly because of the weather conditions, but we'll re-evaluate that um, after that. And given the fact that there's still it's contained, can you explain a bit about why there's still food in place? Still cordons? Yeah. Um, because we're still actively working on the insulin ground. We've got our, our vehicles moving up and down Worsley's Road. Uh, you can see there's a lot of vehicles and vehicle movements around here as well, and it's the same up on the, the summit road. So we've got our tankers are having to traverse up and down Dyers Pass Road to get the water from um, off Dyers Pass Road by the Takahe. You said, oh, sorry. You said you've still got about like uh, 40 active kind of hot spots um, in place. Will this affect, say, residents? Any more evacuations, really? Uh, no, no. Like, a, a lot of the hot spots are actually inside what we call the burnt-out area. Uh, so even if it, it came into flame with a lot of them, it's not going to go anywhere because it's already burnt around it. So a lot of the hot spots are kind of it's down underground, and sometimes they don't look like much so until they start digging into them. What is the concern today with the weather conditions with the fire? Like, what is is there any area of concern, like if the wind picked up, or is there a chance that it could come above ground? What is the issue that you're battling with the wind? Um, haven't really got any concerns. I, I'm pretty comfortable with where we are with it. Um, I can't. It would be. I don't foresee any breakouts anywhere in any of the unburnt areas at this stage. And when you say Thursday is what you're planning for at the moment, is that? Uh, the crews and the situation as is now with the same amount of people working on it or is that like a target when you'd like the fire to be out? Oh, look, I expect from tomorrow on we'll start reducing the crews that we've got uh, working up on the incident ground and uh, our planning for tomorrow there's a reduction probably of about 30 up there already so we're already planning for that and tomorrow there's, a, there's another weather change tomorrow and it'll be a wee bit cooler and the conditions will be more favourable as well. What would you say to people who assume no smoke means no danger? Uh, well, the, the, the danger is probably not on this site uh, for them, but with the dry conditions around Canterbury, anywhere where there's you know, dry vegetation and doing any hot work. And also, sometimes it's, um, it's simple things like a, a stone through a mower blade that creates a spark that can start a fire and it might seem pretty innocuous just out cutting the grass on the side of the road but uh, that's probably more danger in the conditions that we've got today uh, than what there is for people up on the hill. Have you had any more issues with disaster tourists? Any what, sorry? Any more issues with disaster tourists? Uh, <laughs> not from my understanding but Roy may be able to answer that better. Do you want me to say something? Yeah, yeah so in this regard disaster tourists, obviously we're still trying to encourage those people not to be here, hence why the cordons are still in place. And to that end, there's really only one fixed cordon, which is a summit road between Gibby's Pass and Dyer's Road, and that's to allow the fire service and other emergency services that might be requ required up there to be able to operate freely. So really, this is not the place for people just to come and have a look at this stage. We're still uh, amidst the fighting of the fire. And so as long as we need to keep this area cordon for that purpose, we'll do that. So just stay away. If you really have to have a look at it, there's plenty of places you can see the hillside from that's uh, not immediately here. So if you nearly need to have a look at it, do, do so from those places. Don't come here. How much longer would you tell people to kind of stay away at this like, current stage? Well, I don't know for, a, for an exact time frame because it really depends on what happens up the hill. But certainly for the rest of this week, we wouldn't want anyone here just to have a look around, hence why the cordons are in place. As soon as the cordons are lifted, when it's safe for everybody to be here, then everyone's free to go about their normal business. Have staff been allowed back to the Adventure Park without fire and emergency, uh, yes, for lack of a better word, um, escort, yeah. Sorry, I missed the first part of that. Have the staff in the Adventure Park been allowed back without fire and emergency escort yet? Well, I have... They've provided us with a, a risk assessment and a safety plan. So they asked, I have allowed uh, their staff and some of their contractors in to work down in the, in the village. And like the contractors or the builders and that on the building sites behind me, uh, we've got a sign in process here. So they sign in on the way in and then again sign out on the way out. So we know how many people that we've actually got working in here.
And in terms of the emergency operations centre, is that on the same understanding of fees that Thursday will it be looking like you're reducing any staff or are you still keeping on the same numbers? We, we have uh, less staff than obviously when the incident was in full swing, but we'll be continuing with the EOC uh, in, until uh, Fens reduce their presence here. So anything we can do to support them, that's what the council's here to do. And is that state of emergency being reviewed daily? Uh, it, it's a topic that comes up daily, um, but we'll again take our lead from Fens as to when it's going to be safe to do so, and then we'll start to transition to recovery from there. How many army staff are here on site providing assistance? How many other staff? Army staff are here providing assistance. Um, we've actually got a couple of army crews up the hill as well. So not only are they providing the, the kai for us, uh, but they're involved in the firefighting effort as well. Actually, it's probably a good opportunity to uh, to mention some of the support agencies and other people that we've we've had supporting the firefighting efforts. And there's, there's multiple agencies, uh, there's multiple people that that have been helping with with this. And you know, it, uh, we're kind of just so grateful for the support that we've had with that. It's been a, a huge team effort uh, to get the fire to where we are with it today and that that also includes the residents and that for their understanding and like we've had a few of your um, disaster tourists as you as you term it uh, but overall uh, look it's been really good and people have been really good so i just like to thank uh, everybody the community and all those agencies for the support we've received how tired are firefighters, would you say? Obviously there are lots of fires popping up. What, what, what is, what's it like for them? Oh, look, they all, they all get weary. Um, at the end of the day, when they come down off the hill, they look, uh, look pretty shattered. Um, but we are making sure uh, that they're, they're keeping check of their own welfare and we're keeping check of them as well. So they'll only work a, you know, so many days in a row and then they've got to take a couple of days off it as well. So uh, it's not a great feeling when the alarm goes off at uh, 4.30 in the morning to, to come back here. So I feel pretty tired as well and I haven't been doing a heck of a lot. So.